Good day, one and all. My name is Kathy, and I'd like to welcome you to this episode of the Scrap and Crafty Gardener. Today is Holiday Wednesday, and I'm also going to throw in a challenge from a Facebook card making group I'm in called Paper Craft Medley. Uh, they are doing a challenge this month on what they call stacked circles, and I'm going to fit it in with a Christmas card. Now, I, I had visions all night, and I didn't sleep very well because I thought of snow covered mountains with little. Uh, snowmen on sleds having fun coming down the hills. Of course, I get down to my craft room, no little snowmen. But I did find this uh, set from Spellbinders, and let me put a piece of paper behind it, that has gingerbread men. Uh, and this was from one of the card kits of the month. So I'm going to use the gingerbread men and create a snow scene. So let's get started because this going to be a little detailed but not too bad I don't think. Making my usual 5 by 7 card. This measures 10 inches by 7 inches. Score it at the 5 inch mark. Fold it and crease with your bone folder. Then I have a piece of mirror card stock which measures 4 and 3 quarters by 6 and 3 quarters and this is from Tonic Studios and it's it's very mirrory so I'm going to angle it other ways so you don't see me. Um, and then a piece of white card stock, which measures four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And I'm using several dies. I have stamped, cut them all out except one. I want to use this sentiment, let's get excited, it's Christmas. We're gonna start with that so that we can get that part done and over with. And let's just move this up here for a moment. I have these four silver rectangle dies. They're from Stampendous Build a Pop-Up die set. And I want to use one of them, but I'm not sure which one is large enough for, oh, I think, I think the third one in. Let's see. Oh, yes, that'll fit that sentiment perfectly. So let's just cut a piece of white scrap out. Oh, I don't need two strips of white scrap. I'm going to cut that, but I'm going to turn it at an angle. And I don't need the whole piece of paper, so we'll just cut. Well, that's taking a long time today. So we've got that cut out. Now I'll move that down to the misty. Oh goodness. Well, that really dug right into my mat. Ah. Or my platform. Yeah, I can turn that off. I don't need to cut anything else out that I'm aware of. Because I did a lot of that die cutting and stamping offline because I knew that would take a while. Okay, now, let's put that on there, and let's get excited, it's Christmas. I think that looks straight. Yep, all right. Now I'm going to use the Versifying Claire in the color Nocturne for the sentiment. Oh, I should have stamped first and then die cut. Oh, no, that came out great. All right, so we'll set that aside in our bin. Clean off the stamp. And we're done with the stamping platform. Okay, now, for the card itself, I am going to ink blend the background. Now, where did I put the, I moved everything, there we go. So I have my versifying, or versifying, yeah. <laughs> I have my waffle flower grip mat down here. And this sticks very well. 
I want to do a light blue background. And I normally prefer um, the Ranger tumbled glass. Let's see, get that scrap of white and see if there's any blue on here I need to get rid of. When you um, clean off your brush, save the paper. You can always use that to die cut something else, even if you get multiple shades on here. I'm gonna try this blue. This is my favorite for a, a sky. But I did wanna try um, my new Gina K ink and powder blue just to see if I like it as well. And I'm not gonna fill this background in totally because I wanna give the impression that there's some clouds in the sky. And if you see, I'm leaving areas of um, that are mainly white but have just a little bit of blue over them. I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom even though this is gonna be covered with um, mountains of snow. Now I just want to, I'm going to use this piece of scrap paper just to see how this looks for a sky. And oh, that's not bad. It's a little darker than I would normally like. But let's put a little bit of that in here just to see. Okay, it adds a little um, depth. Not too bad. Okay. All right. Now we're going to set this aside for a minute because now I have cut out um, some trees. And I'm not going to use them all. I just want a few in the background. So let's see. I kind of like that tree. Maybe just three trees over here. And I can use these trees for another project. And I'm going to ink blend them. Not with blue. Um, I'm going to do two Gina K colors. One Lucky Clover. And I'm going to take my green and see if there's anything on here. You can get some amazing results by saving your scraps. Okay, let's get these pressed down and just ink blend. I'm going over with the Lucky Clover first. Let's put that right on there. And then I'm gonna come in with a little bit of fresh asparagus, which is a darker shade, just to give some accents to make it look like real trees well as <laughs> real as paper trees can get and just here and there just like that <coughs> pardon me i just need to drink my kool-aid here it is dry in this basement this morning Okay, now I am done ink blending, so I can clean off my waffle flour grip mat with just a little bit of water. Well, Mother Nature sure is having issues lately, isn't she? Um, I've been picking snow peas like crazy, which is normal for this time of year. But yesterday, I picked my very first cherry tomato which is highly unusual for this time of year. Most of my plants haven't even grown more than a foot. I have one that is producing already. All right, now to make our mountains and this stacked circle challenge. I cut out three circles and I used this I got at Joann Fabrics. Um, yeah, it might be Hero Arts, but I don't think so. I'm thinking it's more, it's older. It's more along the lines of Derese's uh, layer dies. And you just cut out three, and now I'm going to glue them together, but stacked on one side. So let's do that now. I 
And this is going to make our snow peaks and mountains and valleys. Not really peaks, but mountains and valleys or hills and valleys. Okay. And now I just need, I need to get my guillotine cutter just a second. Okay, now this measures four inches, so I need to cut this right down the middle at two inches. And here it goes. All right, we'll just set that over here for now. Now, you take one of these and have them go this way, and one of these to go the other direction. Back in. Don't quite remember how that challenge went. Hmm. That's not looking what I was thought it was going to be at all. Not at all. I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna think on this and I'll be like, okay, once I stopped and thought about it, uh, one set of circles wasn't enough. I needed two set of circles. So I cut four circles and stacked them instead of just the three. So what I need to do is take one part from the one set of circles and one part from the other set of circles and then they will go together like that. So that's how they will go on the card like this and uh, yeah I want this to be the top and this to be the bottom and then the trees will go over here I'm gonna put one tree like that All right, so let's get these down. But I, you know what? I need to put, yeah, that's what I need to do. I need to put a strip of paper right across the center too. So I will do that in gold uh, or the silver. I have another piece of the silver cardstock here that I'm just going to cut uh, about, where's my paper cutter here? Let's see how big of a strip do I want that to be. About a, a half an inch should do it. Okay, there we go. And then that will go right across the center. And then your our sentiment will go right on the middle of that. That's what I was doing wrong. So let's put these trees down. And then we'll do everything else from here. And I'm going to go over the top just slightly because it can stick up in the silver. And that'll be okay. You just don't want it to extend beyond the limits of your card. If it does, you could just trim it down. Okay, now I'm also going to glue these down flat. The other items will be popped up over it. So let's see. This one goes like this, and this one's going to go right here to the edge. I got a little. And then that'll go here. It needs to go up just a smidge more. Now, I am going to use foam tape 
for the back of this, and I think my half inch, <coughs> pardon me, if I line it up perfectly, it will go across here and nobody will know the difference. And then that's gonna go, and I got fingerprints on it, but we'll get that off here in just a moment. And this is wide enough that it will, or long enough, it's the same length as the background of the card. Just using a wet wipe to get the stickiness from that was on my fingers from the silver. Okay. But I'm going to trim that off. I don't want it to go all the way out. Okay. And we might as well put our... No, not, I'm not going to put that on yet because I need to figure out where I want it to go. All right, now we've got some gingerbread man. Now, I wanted one of them to look like he was falling down, but none of them were in that position. So I took this little dude that had the outstretched arms. I cut him in half and then tilted his legs a little bit. He's going to be down here falling down. And he's just going to get glued down. Oh, I gotta color them first. My goodness. Let's see. Nope, that's the wrong color for a gingerbread man. Oh. I knew I should have picked out my colors. There we go. Just gonna color him. This is Sandy Brown. I'm going to color all of him in this color and then I'm going to come back and do spots of him in red. And the, the red I want is tomato red. That's the only really um, true red that I have found is R872 tomato. So we're going to do his eyes. And his rickrack is usually white, but I'm doing it in red. And he's going to be down here laying down like he fell. He's fell down the mountain. And then I have another guy. Oops. Well, let's just hold that down. I have another gingerbread man that I thought looked like he was skiing. So we're just going to color him the same colors. These are triplets going out skiing. Now you could get fancy and do some shadowing on here. But I thought he looked like he was skiing. So I didn't have any skis. So I found these two from um, Spellbinders. One is Skyview Pies and one is Service Slice. In the Service Slice, I found this and it cuts out this triangle, but it leaves an edge. So I narrowly cut along the edge and then I angled them to a point. So those are gonna be his skis, if I can figure them out, or his poles. And then on the um, Skyview Pies, or one of these, Service Slice or Skyview Pies, this has a piece 
that look like skis. So his skis are also going to be red, and we're just going to color them here, and then I'll cut them down to size. And I'll have to clean this off my table later. And then the ski poles I'm going to make in silver. And get my silver gel pen here. I'm not sure how these are going to look, but I thought it might be cute. All right. So if we stand him up here, maybe if I cut these to about that length, I'll cut the other one the same. This is all trial and error by the seat of my pants. I'm going to put him on some skis. And I'm going to put just a little um, tape runner on the back of his feet here. Just to get those skis held down. And also going to put it on his arms to hold the ski poles. Now, they might need to be shortened. I'm not sure here, so I will. Yeah, they need to be shortened just a little bit. So I'm going to put them in place. Oh, I thought I, where'd it go? He's like, yay, look at me, I'm skiing. And then I'm just going to trim the top of them just a smidge. All right. And this guy I want to pop up a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to put a foam strip as best I can behind him. Oh, there, I just moved his ski pole. So I'm going to put a little bit of the foam on his arms just to kind of hold those poles into place. And then a piece down each leg. And then a little piece for his head. Actually, that kind of came out cute. Right, and we want to put him. He's going to be coming down that hill. Yay! I'm not sure I'm going to put the other guy on here. I might. He might just be over here jumping for joy. So let's just color him. Same colors. You never know what piece of a die set you can use to make something else. So I hope this can encourage you to look at your dies. What can I make out of that that isn't pie related? Look, I made skis <laughs> and ski poles. He's just gonna be down here jumping for joy. So we're gonna glue him flat. Well, Still got to fill that bottle. It worked a little bit this morning when I was playing, but. All right. Oh, 
Okay, now I am going to add the sentiment. If I can figure out where I placed it now. That's what it was on. Did I, st did I stick it back in here? No. Okay, Mr. S ah, there it is, hiding. Let's see where we want to put the sentiment. I'm thinking in the middle. So I'm just gonna put some tape runner on that with a little bit of glue. Just in the center since it's going to be on this raised piece. Now we get to add glitter. I am using um, some ultra fine transparent crystal glitter, but I'm use also using my quickie glue pen. So I'm gonna take this glue and it goes on blue and I am just going along the tops of the, the edge on these circle dies. And we'll do half at first. Because snow's going to sparkle, at least in my world. Now I'll do the other side, and then I will um, take a brush to get off the glitter where it won't stick eventually, but I want to get it off the card. And then I'll come in and put a little on the trees also. Okay, now we'll just go a little bit along some of the tree branches here. Just to make it look like it has snowed recently so that the ski resort has snow. Now this ultra fine transparent glitter is from um, Northwoods rubber stamps. All right, now I'm just gonna get a soft brush here and to brush off where on the card I don't want the glitter. And that's too big of a brush. Let's see if I have a smaller one. Uh, yeah. a little something down here so let's put oh what are we going to put down here I'm going to take one of these circles I'll use the one um, the three layered one and I'm just going to put a little bit of snow right here at the bottom like that. And then I'm going to carefully cut off what I don't want. There we go. And give him a little glue and glitter. This card is going to sparkle. Now, once this glue dries, I will come in um, 
with a more fine detailed brush to get off the glue that, or get off the glitter. If I go too much now into the glued areas, it will smear the glue. So this is just a temporary. But that's our card for today. We're gonna get it. This glitter picked up before I make a big mess, even more than usual. And then we'll put that on our background and call it a video. A little piece of paper that got in there I want to get out and I almost put it in my glitter bottle all right uh, <laughs> yeah I am usually covered in glitter that's a common thing we'll be out shopping and someone say hey you got glitter all over yeah probably now, I'm going to get it off my fingers as best I can here. And I need another wet one. Okay, so let's put this card together. I'm just going to hold this for just a moment. Okay, and there's our card for today, covered in glitter. I still have to do some cleanup with the brush um, once this is totally dry. Um, and you will see that on the picture at the end. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope I can inspire you to take your dye parts and go, hmm. What can I make out of that? I think this piece would make some excellent purple goop on a Halloween card or in neon green even, or, or blood red, blood dripping down. You just never know what you can come up with. And this little piece could be um, some fluffy hair like a, a troll doll used to have. I could have given them troll doll hair. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. All, all dried and de-glittered. I think this would be a perfect Christmas card for a, um, a kid or a kid at heart.